we embarked on this long journey from very humble beginnings. We started off with a couple of spheres, simply racing each other across the screen and then holding their positions once they'd finished each race. In order to achieve this, we learned how to use condition nodes to fix the spheres at their start and finish positions as need be, along with using a monoflop and a range mapper to make them move between positions A and positions B. We also learned how to generate a random number to vary the time that it would take for both of the spheres to reach their destinations and thereby race each other. Moving on from here, we did some advanced work with the range mapper. Firstly, we dragged in its operator icon, enabling us to get to some advanced features within it, such as working with the points of its spline and manipulating them in order to control the speeds at which the two spheres were able to move, thereby allowing them to overtake each other during the course of a race to make things a little bit more realistic. We then created an algorithm that would tell us which of the two spheres had come first and second. I then took it a stage further than this by showing you how to deal with a draw scenario should one of those arise. We then added the third sphere and developed an expression that would tell us who had come first, second or third out of the three of them. At this point things started to get slightly more involved. We then moved up another gear and added two more spheres and created an expression that would tell us who had come first, second, third, fourth and fifth and at this point things really started to get involved. We then reached the stage where we could replace our spheres with snakes and we also had a brief look at how we might go about modelling a snake before continuing with the espresso. On this occasion we developed an algorithm that would animate text thereby giving the positions of each snake at the end of each race. Once again, this involved the use of one of the more advanced features of the range mapper node. We then looked at adding a scoring system and we developed the part of the expression that would allow us to deal with that. This involved the use of null objects as helpers, which was something I'd not shown you before. We then took things a step further and added a slither number counter which would ultimately be used to decide the winner at the end of 10 races. Things then got even more in depth because we moved on from here to creating the algorithm that would control the scoreboard. And we started off developing the various scenarios that it could actually handle, ranging from an overall winner, an absolute slither, a four-way slither, a three-way slither, through to a two-way slither, which we would use later on. During the course of this development, we learned how to test and debug all of this by using a combination of constant nodes and result nodes, a very simple but powerful technique for finding any errors we may have made. Our next task was to create the part of the algorithm that would animate our outcome indicators which would pop up out of the scoreboard at the end of the 10 races to indicate as to whether there had been an overall winner or one of our draw scenarios. As we'd done previously, we used nested conditions in order to make this work, along with passing objects through a condition node. We also used an iteration and a linked list to reset our outcome indicators to their initial positions once 10 races had elapsed. We still weren't quite finished. Our final task with regard to animation was to create the part of the expression that would animate our indicator arrows and tell us which snake had won or which combinations of snakes had drawn with each other. And they're off. We then added some very basic sound effects. Before moving on to have a brief look at how we might add some scenery and create the textures for the various elements. We also made the displays of our scoreboard operate the way they would in the real world. Finally, we discussed the importance of optimising our expressions in order to minimise the risk of any glitches or errors creeping into our animations. Well, that really does bring us to the end of this series, and I sincerely hope that it's helped to demystify Espresso and that your knowledge is considerably greater than it was before you embarked on this course. It's been an absolute joy for me bringing you these tutorials and creating the game in the first place. I had a heck of a lot of fun doing that. And finally, keep on enjoying Cinema 4D. And whatever you do, keep those animations coming.
preferably of course made with espresso <laughs> anyway that about wraps it up from me so i've been julian field otherwise known as espresso mechanic thanks very much for watching and i'll see you soon and they're off